Let's see if they're going to unmute my mic. There we are. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us for another edition of the Red Pill Diaries. I'm your host. And without further ado, I got to bring in one, if not the most busiest guy on planet Earth. He has to be one of the top five. Um, My my guy, Larry Johnson. Um, Larry, hey, brother, I'm bringing you in. I my apologies. I left you hanging yesterday. Friends should not do that to a friend. Didn't do it intentionally. I'm old. It For some reason, it didn't get put on the schedule. Oh, it, it's cool, Larry. And then as soon as I see your email, I go, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, that's why my, my forehead's flat because I keep smacking myself in the forehead. Hey, things like that go down. I want to ask you because uh, I know you're busy, but what is going on in Washington with the um, – I think this is the first time in history that the Speaker of the House was removed like that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, you know, McCarthy didn't keep his word. He he promised uh, the, these uh, Freedom Caucus Republicans that he would bring clean appropriations bills before the House, that they would never again get forced into a situation where they had all this these appropriations mashed together into one continuing resolution because that, that's the most corrupt practice there is. If you do it that way, you can hide billions of dollars, steal billions from the American mm. people. And Matt Gates and, and Nancy Mace and, and others, you know, McCarthy broke his word. He lied. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, we ain't taking this anymore. You're gone. <laughs> they, they had negotiated one of their conditions that they had uh, obtained from McCarthy when he he was so desperate to become speaker because that man that is the path to wealth and glory. You know, <laughs> you get you get to be at the front of the line for the food handout, and um, so he sold his soul and left that as a as a, you know it was like a ticking time bomb that they could set off any time if he failed to to you know follow his word. I, I, I posted the letter that the Freedom Caucus sent him last week, I believe it was. And McCarthy's response, and the letter is very reasonable. It asks some very direct questions. Why didn't you do this? Why are you doing that? You know, where? And McCarthy basically said, hey, Freedom Caucus. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. And, and now he's going, oh, I'm shocked and amazed that they're going to try to get rid of me. Well, dude, <laughs> you know, pick the fight. The, the people he picked the fight with are not the people who are financially dependent on him. Mm. So, you know, Lyndon Johnson, uh, who first really perfected the art of building influence in Congress, in the House of Representatives and then the Senate, by establishing political action committees raising money, becoming the bank that everybody else had to come to. And so by virtue of getting everybody else coming to you for money, you become the man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, he's, he's pushing you know, methamphetamine and these guys are all hooked on it, you know, and he's, he's the supplier. <laughs> well, that's what Kevin McCarthy became. McCarthy was the fund chief fundraiser. He was the guy, he would funnel uh, money, and, uh, you know, key leadership posts and committees uh, to uh, these, you know, people that favored him and would punish those that didn't. Mm -hmm. well, it all came to a head yesterday and he's gone. You know, they booted him. Do you think he felt that he was untouchable now that he was the Speaker of the House, the third most powerful person in America? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he thought... You know, being in Washington, it's like being at uh, up on Mount Everest, get up so high that you lose the oxygen, you lose the ability to think. That's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, he got his head up in the clouds and just got cut off from the oxygen supply and started, you know, really believing that he was somebody. I mean, just as an example, you saw the, the acting speaker, the speaker pro tem, he's called mm -hmm. the guy named McHenry, I believe. <laughs> uh, first thing he did. Upon taking and getting the gavel, he told Nancy Pelosi, hey, you know that office you have here in the Capitol? Get your bony ass out. You know? <laughs> Tossed it. You got to ask the question, why did she still have an office in the Capitol, a favored spot, when she wasn't even in leadership anymore? Because, you know, you know, 
you can, you, you can bet your mortgage that if the shoe was on the other foot, yeah. Yeah. she would toss Kevin McCarthy in a heartbeat or any other Republican. Mm -hmm. So it's like, guys, if you're going to play hardball, play hardball, but don't, don't show up uh, expecting uh, Nerf balls, you know, and that's been the Republicans pro uh, problem in part. They're corrupt. Mm -hmm. And and McCarthy is sort of embodies that corruption. Well, what does this um, how would this affect America's foreign policy, especially um, in the caucuses? Because we see that the United States is pushing hard, yeah, uh, to uh, realign Armenia um, to the detriment of Russia and Turkey. You know, uh, the United States is like the most annoying mother-in-law in the world. You know, the crazy lady that's always trying to tell you what to do. You know, she's sitting there chugging a bottle of vodka, smoking three packs of cigarettes, and she's telling you to stop drinking and stop smoking. Yeah. Okay? And and she's spending every night in the casino blowing money out and then telling you you need to be fiscally responsible. That's the United States. The United States has been this out-of-control force in the world over the last 20 years in particular, where we go out and we kill more, we stir up more mayhem, we cause more disruption than any other country in the world. And then we're always blaming other countries for uh, accusing them of doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, and I, I'm just getting more fed up with it by the day. I mean, the, 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 the hypocrisy, because at the root of it, what is involved is what we're seeing with Hunter Biden. This is yeah. about U.S. favored people getting access to money overseas. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll have the right political connections. We'll hook yeah. you up, but you got to pay us. You know, and so it's it's a form of organized crime. That, that's all it is. So this 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 upheaval right now, it is going to change the face of the house. Mm -hmm. You're going to have uh, a house leadership that's going to have to be less compliant with the Biden administration. Now, some will say, well, well, what about the, some of the Republicans may opt to say, okay, we're going to bail, you know, we're going to abandon. Uh, the Republican Party will line up with the Democrats and join them and put Hakeem Jeffries in charge. That's possible, but uh, the ones who do that uh, would have no great guarantee that Jeffries would honor his word and uh, grant them, you know, control of a certain committee, which, you know, banking committee or, mm -hmm. or foreign relations or, uh, you know, it's, it's just, this is all about what can I get for me? Mm -hmm. So, I think those those Republicans who are currently in positions of power in the House, they don't want to jeopardize that by necessarily alienating uh, the Freedom Caucus members. Freedom Caucus members had a valid point. And uh, so I think the the odds the odds are right now that you're going to see Steve Scalise or Jim Jordan uh, as the most likely front runners. Um, uh, the dark horse in this is a congressman named Byron Donalds. Donalds is great. He is a former banking finance guy. He is, uh, lives down in Naples. So, but they call him a dark horse because, uh, and no, it's not because he's black. I've had some people accuse me of this. Oh, you're being racist. No, <laughs> he's, he's a first, he's a first term congressman. That's what he is. That makes you a dark horse. You don't have all the hooks. And I know for a fact, uh, I've got a friend who is a major lobbyist in D.C. And he had some, let's say, uncomplimentary things to say about Donald's. Well, you know why? Because Donald's ain't his bitch. <laughs> Donald's, you know, Donald's is not going to say, hey, man, give me money and I'll, I'll do what you want. No, no, no. Donald's is an independent thinker, a uh, strong guy. And, you know, he's I, I could, you know, he, this is this is a man if you want to talk about presidential timber. Uh, this man's a walking sequoia tree. OK, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Larry. I might have to steal that yeah, from no, you. Uh, steal away, brother. Uh, for those of you who may see a flickering in the back, there's a power surge going on in the neighborhood um, and they're trying to fix it. So it'll be hazy a little bit and it'll be a little flickery in the back sometimes. So I want to apologize. And I should have said that up front, but um, Larry, the reason I ask you these things is because it seems like the empire um, she's pushing with no bounds. Look at the pressure. She's um, she's doubling down in, in, in um, 
Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And she has Britain talking about um, deploying troops to Ukraine. Germany is deploying troops to the Russian border. And Germany is say, openly stating that, um, that they're giving missiles to Ukraine to uh, specifically target Russia proper, not just Russian troops in Ukraine, but Russia proper. And then you have America putting pressure with Samantha Power in Armenia, um, a, a, a former Soviet Republic and uh, supposed ally of Russia. I'm talking about they're putting on the full court press. Yeah, it's like uh, pouring cups of gasoline, you know, <laughs> and then playing with uh, your matches, lighting them to say, huh, wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, we're trying, we're trying to set the world on fire. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, let's start with the British. Uh, uh, well, that the guy came out and said, "Okay, yeah, we're going to put uh, British trainers in 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 Ukraine, and yeah, the British fleet will sell into the Black Sea. Well, that'll be that'll be its last trip if that ever." <laughs> and um, then very quickly, Rishi Sunak came out and said, "Oh, no, 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 we're talking so way down in the future." Mm -hmm. So they did they did a one eighty. Now, if you're in Germany. Annalena Baerbach, you know, their foreign minister, uh, she calls that a 360. Now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't think you know what that word means. That, that means you come back to where you started. And what Sunak was doing was said, no, no, we're making a complete reversal. Um, so uh, th there's a, I forget the name of the, uh, of the back, it may be called the Arabic backflip. I mean, it's a gymnastic move where mm -hmm. a guy will stand here He'll jump up in the air and then turn around and land facing the opposite direction. <laughs> That's what Britain did on this. They finally recognized <laughs> because uh, uh, Medvedev, Medvedev, the former prime minister and president of Russia, he's now like the existing de facto vice president in Russia mm -hmm. in charge of the National Security Council. And he made very clear, well, Britain does that. They're targets and, you know, we'll be at war with them. And the Brits say, "Oh, wait a second! You know, we don't we don't want to go that far." <laughs> uh, the United States, the, you're, you're correct, is you know stirring the pot with the Brits in Armenia, and getting the Armenians to, you know, start uh, trying to push away from Russia and having any friendly relations with Russia, even though majority of the population in Armenia are Russian speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it is. Uh, the United States is not working to build a peaceful world. We need to have enemies in order to keep our economy going. It's that mm -hmm. simple. As long as we got an enemy out there, we can justify. We got to pour more money into the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. And you know, on that point, all the all the existing candidates running for office are, are wrong, from Donald Trump to all of the Republicans to Joe Biden. Well, right now our defense budget is in excess of 850 billion, headed towards 900 uh, billion, a trillion dollars. And when you re recognize the amount of money that we've been wasting overseas, and you look at the horrors that are going on in our inner cities, in particular, yes. I mean, Black Americans are suffering more than any other racial group in the United States because of these policies, and yet they've continued to embrace you know, the Democrat leadership. And, and, and candidly, it, it wouldn't help if they embraced the Republicans either at this point, because, you know, nobody has come up with saying, let's make it a priority that every child who enters school will be proficient in math and reading by the time they leave high school. You know, because if you can't read and you can't add, you can't be an independent soul. And we want to you know, we're looking to make, uh, you know, men and women who are proud and independent, not dependent. Mm -hmm. And it's like our entire culture is now shifted into uh, creating a dependency mode, not just among black Americans, among Hispanic, among Caucasian across the board. And it's it's really a day. It's a dangerous time in America when you look at just the, the, the legions of homeless that populate the streets and the crime that is going on. You know, you've seen. Uh, was it in Brooklyn uh, two days ago? This this lefty poet, they you know he was a big you know, organizer on the left. He's he gets stabbed out on the street. The other guy just walks up and you know starts going at him with like an ice pick. Mm -hmm. uh, another uh, lefty uh, journalist in Philadelphia was making fun of 
uh, you know, the conservatives who were warning about the consequences of crime. What happened to him? Guy broke into his house, shot him, killed him. <laughs> so, you know, karma. <laughs> to say karma can be a bitch. Hey, don't forget, Larry. Um, what was it? This week, one of the congressmen was parking his car um, a few blocks away from the Capitol, and he Henry, was carjacked. Yeah, Henry Cuellar. He was he was south of the Capitol. You go up if you go up South Capitol Street, then there's New Jersey Avenue that runs at a diagonal. It's just literally he was a, literally a block away from the Nash, Nationals baseball stadium. So yeah, you know and. Cuellar comes from a, he's one of those border congressmen uh, that there are, there are, there are some interesting allegations about his connections to people in Mexico. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, do you think, um, and I know time is short. I want to get just a couple questions in, but do you think <laughs> that these, these brilliant people in Washington, do they ever sit back and reflect on the situation because um, they pour so much money into war and propaganda abroad while the at home they're pur purposely dumbing down the masses and they don't realize that um that will be that will have a terrible boomerang effect because these are your lawyers doctors scientists and teachers and educators of the future and if you dumb them down or limit them educationally you're you're um putting a block on the growth and growth and progression of the Republic in, in, in so many words, yeah. you're killing your own nation. Well, look, Rashid, I could take half your brain, throw it away, take you to Washington and you'd still be smarter than all these leaders that are trying to make these decisions. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what they, what they're doing, it is so short sighted. And, and, you know, and I've just run into this with today with a, having an email exchange with a friend. He's a, he's an old, older gentleman. He's Jewish. Uh, oh, hear that? I just got it too. A national alert. I just got that, it too. That is the national wireless emergency alert system to warn us that, <laughs> hey, we keep doing the, we keep doing what is. we're doing. We're going to need to set this off for real because the Russians are going to blow us up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but I, I've been having, this is, it is inconceivable to me how somebody who is Jewish can support Ukraine in this war that is underway because they are Nazis. They, the, 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 the essence, the core of Ukraine's government is dedicated to the memory of Stefan Bandera. And, um, there, there's that, and actually now a video out of one of these Ukrainian nationalists because he was asked directly, he said, hey, what, what do you think about having a Jew for a president? And he says, eh, it's, it's not the best thing. You know, Zelensky's been better than we expected. <laughs> but, but he says, you know, it is a national symbol, and we really shouldn't have, shouldn't have a Jew as the national symbol. But he said, the nice thing about it is it inoculates us against the charge, uh, those who want to accuse us of being Nazis. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And so... Uh, I, I tried to explain to my friend back in World War II in the city of Lutz, which is now called Lviv, uh, and, and uh, it's in Ukraine, but it used to be in Poland. There was a Jewish ghetto established by the Nazis. They put a guy in charge there named Chaim Rumkowski. Chaim Rumkowski was is one of the most corrupt, evil men you could ever uh, imagine. Um, he he raped. Uh, Jewish women that worked for him. He stole. He was the one that made the decisions of people who got on the trains. And he was doing all this to save his own skin because he figured, hey, if I'm a good errand boy for uh, the Nazis, you know, they'll save save my bacon. <laughs> well, he made a bad choice in that because at the end of the day, when the, he lived up his usefulness to the Nazis, they put him on a train, sent him to Auschwitz, and he died in the gas chambers. Mm. So, just a reminder to Zelensky that just because he's been a useful fool, a useful tool up to this point, it's no guarantee that it, it's uh, that there's a long life or that uh, he's guaranteed uh, a peaceful retirement. Just the opposite. I want to bring your attention to something. Of uh, I think a day or two ago, I um, interviewed Tim Tim Kirby up in Russia. Um, it was a live day, and 
he said that there are a, a lot of people in Russia that don't believe that um uh what is his name the former leader of uh of the um uh, Prigozhin yeah uh, Prigo uh, he, uh, he said uh, a lot of Prigozhin? yeah don't believe that Prigozhin is 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 dead and he also said that um the video showing the shoot down of the the plane and the helicopter um killing Russian uh troops there was never any um um, video showing the the missile hitting any plane or helicopter. He said, and that made his rounds across Russia, and that um they believe uh, some people, a lot of people believe that it was just time for Russia to um quiet Prigozhin and move him somewhere else. Um, with this, stuff. what what say you on this matter? Because he said he actually lived on the highway, um where um the troops uh, yeah. when this so called insurgents. Um, by the Wagner group took place. He said he was actually on the highway and and a lot of the stuff didn't make sense because that's a long strip, just like you said, and they had to be refueled and it was hot and, and they were stopping and there were no um, uh, attempts to stop them or anywhere, anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, look, uh, I have a crazy sister uh, and she, on 9-11, she was writing me saying, you know, that I had been lying to the country about planes hitting the World Trade Center. Now, there's no fix in that kind of crazy uh, because you, you've got the video, multiple videos of the planes hitting. Oh, that was CGI. Oh, oh yeah. And the passengers, what were they? So you try to you try to reason with a person like that. And she, I mean, in her mind, it's it, it's closed. It's not you're not getting that open. So I'd say the same thing to this guy. Uh, number one, uh, there's no no evidence at all that the plane that Prigozhin was on was shot down. It looks it looks like the the wings detached from the fuselage. Now some have attributed that to an explosive in the wheel well. That's possible, except the the evidence the images I saw, the photographs of the wheel of uh, the wheel well attached to the wing, didn't appear to show any kind of explosive damage. You know that you, you the, the oh no 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 in the metal no 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 he he was not advocating that um there was a conspiracy to kill Prigozhin he said that a lot of people in Russia believe that the Russian government did this um this act it was an act and that they moved Prigozhin uh, covertly out of the way and that um a lot of the stuff that the Russian government was uh, feeding the masses did not make sense on Russian territory that's right pretty much. So, so you've watched some of the videos of Prigozhin in the past, right? All right I've watched them. Yeah. Okay. Does he strike you like the kind of guy you could keep quiet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> no, yeah. he loved the camera. He yeah. loved the camera. You'd you'd put a you'd have to stuff a sponge in his mouth and put a hood over his head, and he'd still be talking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got a. Yeah, to bury him beneath the ground. He's yeah. he's like I call him the he's like a Russian version bigger of Joe Pesci, you know. <laughs> so so, Larry, where are we headed? I mean, we have chaos in in Capitol on Capitol Hill. We have it looks like a a faltering um, plan to re uh, reassert American dominance globally. We have. America in a debt spiral, the likes of which no nation has ever seen, and right. yet she's doubling down on failed policy, and she's antagonizing the very nations that are responsible for buying her debt. How is that? In, how is that sane or rational? Yeah. So, so, um, what what you're looking at? We're in a Lamborghini. We're driving 150 miles an hour down a straightaway, and there's a brick wall at the end, and we're not breaking. So that that only ends one way with a with a terrible crash. I mean, it's just um, you know it it is unfortunate. I don't see nobody's taking their foot off the accelerator. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. You'd say, you know, it's we're starting to see elements of that in terms of the leaks that are coming out. You know, the State Department document that leaked this week about the corruption uh, in in, uh, in Ukraine. I mean, it was very severe, and they're they're trying to impose conditions on Ukraine for receiving future aid that will make it impossible for them to steal 
and it's going to certainly take the enthusiasm for the war out of some elements in Ukraine. But you still, I, th I think this upheaval in the House of Representatives, it's not going to bring an end to the funding, uh, but it's going to force a deal in which money is appropriated to deal with people like in Ohio and in Maui, Hawaii, who suffered that devastating loss, and along the Texas, board, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California border with Mexico to deal with the flood of illegal immigrants. And then there'll be some money for Ukraine, but not as much as before. So there's, we're starting to see the weakening on that. But it remains to be seen whether Congress is going to take any kind of action uh, to really stop this flood of illegal migrants uh, coming across the border and deal with uh, the human trafficking and the drug trafficking that's just destroying our cities. I mean, you know, we're losing 100,000 plus a year now from a uh, drug overdose. So we're losing almost in one year alone, we're losing twice the number of uh, soldiers, sailors, Marines that died in Vietnam over a 15 year period. So, you know, it's just the, the numbers, they're off the, they're, they're off the charts as far as uh, what America is accustomed to seeing. Last question before we let you go. Hey, I want to tell everybody this guy lends me his time. He's one of the most, the, the busiest person on YouTube and out there, period. But um, I really appreciate the time that you lend to us, Larry. Um, uh, anytime. I'm, I'm always, I'm always uh, appreciate the chance to be with you, Rashid. I really appreciate it. I want to say, what do you think is going on in the minds or, um, of Medvedev, um, Putin, and the Russian um, National Security Council, and what will be their response for the um, antagonistic approach of NATO? They've, they've transitioned from well, more than a year ago. They, I think, still believe that there was a chance to negotiate with the West to work out a deal with the West, to come to some sort of under peaceful understanding. Uh, I think that they now have come, uh, you know, again, Annalena Baerbach, if you now come 360, no, <laughs> they've now gone 180, the opposite. They recognize that there is no peaceful outcome that will be acceptable to the West uh, that, that would not compromise Russian security. So in the last week, You've had Medvedev, you've had Lavrov, the foreign minister, uh, you've had Shoigu, their sec the equivalent of our Secretary of Defense, uh, you've had Volodin, who is the Speaker of the House or the Duma. Uh, he's he's like Kevin McCarthy, except he still has a job. <laughs> uh, you cold blooded. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all all of these guys have come out and said very clearly. Ukraine must, other, must either uh, comply, surrender, or else it's going to cease to exist as a country. They didn't paint any middle ground. There's not going to be transgender Ukraine. Yeah. It's, it's going to either uh, an unconditional surrender to Russia and, uh, or it's, it's going to be destroyed. What does an unconditional surrender look like? Uh, Russia is going to, going to demand uh, that Ukraine rel relinquish its claim on Odessa. Mm. Uh, it will take control, probably, of all territory that's east of the Dnieper River and then let Ukraine have what it needs uh, on the other side. So uh, that's, you know, I think that's where we're at. Mm. Well, that's... That's a mic drop moment. Thank you, Larry. I'll um, send you a copy of the video in a few minutes. Thank you so much for joining us and giving your time. Man, we really, really, really appreciate it. Anytime. And again, my apologies for leaving you hanging yesterday. It's all good, man. It's all good. I'll you're, talk to you later. You're a generous soul. Later, brother. All Bye. right. Everybody, thank you for joining us on another edition of the most powerful platform for truth. On the web, this is your platform for an for information, for empowerment, and for education. This is the Red Pill Diaries. We're going to try to come back later if time permits and do another live stream if time permits. We hope that you join us. Hey, support the channel in any and every way you can. Go over to our platforms, the empowermentoftruth.locals.com, on Twitch, on Twitter, um, on 
Odyssey on Rumble. Um, also, you can become a channel member. Go over to Patreon. Become a patron. We really appreciate everything. We're just trying to keep these great interviews and great um, conversations going. And we want you to be a part of this. Um, you don't have to give a super chat to be a part of this. We're not even about that. We really well, we appreciate the super chats, the super thanks, um, the cash apps and all of that stuff like that. We really appreciate that. That keeps the channel going. That keeps us motivated. That keeps us hungry. But I want people who may not have it or may not be able to spare it at the time to also have a word. So that's why I highlight everybody. I try to get everybody in there because we're all striving to be upright in this uh, in this downtrodden world. Uh, and um and your opinion matters just as much as ours. On that note, know that I love you if you love truth, but know that the love of the true and living God will always love you better. Until we next speak again, stay strong, stay true, but above all things, stay righteous. Hey, mama, your baby boy loves you more than life. Deuces, everybody. Thank you so much. We're out of here.